Now, the motivation for this talk, uh, there are many motivations. Actually, there are many motivations. We know GR is a very successful theory. Uh, black hole, gravitational waves, and many other phenomena. But there are some issues. There are some problems with GR. There are two very well-known problems, dark matter and dark energy. OK? I mean, there is a huge contradiction between what um, we see and what we predict by GR in the case of dark matter. Of course, the solution for this problem is just to maybe dark matter really exists and dark energy exists, and that's it. But there is a fundamental problem with GR, and is the prediction of singularities when we have the gravitational collapse. We have the gravitational collapse, and there is a singularity. And this is a real, real, real problem. Now, what is the solution for these singularities when happen after the gravitational collapse? There must be an event of horizon, so on a high supersurface, which uh, protect the singularity from the rest of the universe, OK? And this is the weak cosmic censorship. <laughs> but now the question is, is there any regular black hole solution, any regular black hole solution in the context, in the framework of GR? And the answer is yes. Actually, there are many regular black hole solutions. But all this black hole solution, um, all this black hole solution has this problem. Um, okay, for instance, remember the Schwarzschild solution, if this is GR or GT, is something like this, okay? This is the horizon. And if we have a solution like this, with a horizon, this is a regular solution, okay? This is a regular solution. But there is a second horizon, an interior horizon. Uh, this is, for instance, in the case of the raisin neutral solution. In, also, in the case of the Kerr solution, we have this horizon. And this is a problem. Why the Cauchy horizon is a problem? I'm not going to explain technically why this is a problem. Just I'm going to mention that GR stopped being a physical theory. Okay? There is no predictions in this region of the space-time. I mean in this region. Beyond, beyond the Cauchy horizon, in, in this interior solution, we have a problem, OK? Predictability is lost. Now, um, how to fix this problem? Uh, uh, Penrose, the solution by Penrose, and this is the strong cosmic censorship, is just to delete space-time. There is no space-time in this area. So if there is not the space time, uh, we don't need GR. Uh, there are some counterexamples for this, okay? But I'm not going to talk about this now. Uh, one of the, these counterexamples is that there is indeed space time, but it's not smooth enough to use GR, okay? But in any case, Cauchy horizon means a problem. So when people talk about regular solution, and we have this discussion in a conference some times ago, someone was very enthusiastic showing a regular black hole. Very, very enthusiastic, and I just ask <laughs> why so happy? Because this, that regular black hole uh, had a Cauchy horizon. And we realized with some colleagues that most people creating regular black hole they don't know about the Cauchy horizon and what the problem about the Cauchy horizon, uh, what the problems about the Cauchy horizon uh, are. Um, there are many problems. Anyway, in this talk, I'm going to um, present a regular black hole without Cauchy horizon, and I'm going to show this with some details. I'm going to use some approach. We call this the gravitational decoupling. I have talked about this many times here. Essentially, the idea is we have Einstein equation two source, two energy momentum tensor. I solve Einstein equation for one source, Einstein equation for the second one, and the solution is a kind of superposition. Of course, it's not a linear superposition because we know GR is not a linear theory. But it's a kind of superposition, OK? It's a combination of the two solutions. And this helps a lot. And always I try to remark this 
uh, we are not linearizing gravity, okay, by this approach. Hmm? Also, this is not a perturbative approach. Indeed, it's an exact approach, and it's much than just an alg algorithm to produce uh, solutions. It's much, much than that. Okay, so this approach worked very well, but in the spherical, symmetric, and static case, very well. There are, of course, some limitations, and this limitation uh, are this, okay? Only works very well for, for the spherical, symmetric, and static situation and for the stationary situation. In a very particular case, in this case, in the rotational case, when there is a Kerr shield space times, that is when the temporal metric component and the radial metric component satisfy this condition. Now, there is a trivial case for the gravitational decoupling. We can see this the line element for the spherical symmetric case. We need two uh, metric functions. So when we impose these constraints, we have what we call the Kerr shield class of space times. In this particular case, we can see that Einstein components are linear in the mass function, linear in the derivatives. So that means any second solution can be coupled with the first one to create a new solution. We can do this many times. Of course, this, this is a very particular and trivial case of the gravitational decoupling, what we call the gravitational decoupling. This is a very simple example. We have vacuum and the vacuum filled by a cosmological constant. We solve Einstein equation for the vacuum. We have the Schwarzschild solution. Then we solve Einstein equation for the, the, Sitter, the Sitter space time. We have this solution. And the combination produces the very well known Kerr de Sitter solution. It's, it's, it's quite easy. It's straightforward. Now, I was working with this approach. I mean, working with superposition of many solutions by using the gravitation, the coupling superposition of many solutions to try to do the following to try to create a black hole, a regular black hole, without Cauchy horizon. And there are many problems when you try to do this. Because if you create the black hole, if you have a horizon, if, if we have an horizon, and, it's, and as soon as we demand regularity, usually we lose the horizon. We impose regularity appears the Cauchy horizon. So it's very difficult. So, Finally, by the, superpos by the superposition of all this mass function, I found a very nasty, large, complicated expression. But I can notice something about this very large expression. There was a Taylor expansion which could fix this very large expression. And finally, I realized that this very large expression actually is the expansion of this quite simple expression with only two parameters, n and k, you see? We can see here if k is one and, uh, for instance, if n is minus one, we have the Schwarzschild solution. If n is two and k is one, we have the, the Sitter solution and so on. This is the mass function and what is important here, uh, Rs is the, is the mass contained uh, okay, let's see what, what is this. This is just, um, this is just a spherically symmetric space-time, and I demand all this mass m, which is defined by this way, is contained in this radius, okay, in this, in this region. So we have a spherically symmetric uh, distribution. Now, a simple analysis of this shows the, the following. Only the case n equal to produce a, 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 monoto a monotonic decrease of the energy density. That means, and this is, uh, we need to demand this. If this is the energy density, this must be the solution for a, for a normal, compact astrophysical object, okay? It's the only solution possible, right? Okay? Uh, the energy density, most uh, uh, has, uh, has this behavior. Now, uh, also, what about the parameter k? Uh, we can see that the density gradients are proportional to k, and, actu and 
and also the, the curvature is proportional to k, okay? And the dominant energy conditions also for k equal, uh, for, for k satisfies in these conditions. So n and k, let's say, they have a very um, clear uh, interpretation in these solutions. Now, um, what about the, so the source of this solution? Now, listen to me because I, I think this is very, very important. There are many, many papers, many papers, every day, many papers talking about uh, Einstein solution, Einstein solution, Einstein solution, Einstein solution. But the problem is we cannot stay all life producing Einstein solution, Einstein, um, so I mean solution to Einstein equation, solution to Einstein equation. But what is the motivation behind all this? The motivation must be, in my opinion, Always, what is the theory be, uh, behind this solution? What is the, the theory? So if you ask to me what is the theory behind this solution, sorry, this solution, I have no idea, okay? I have no idea. So when I say the source of this solution, what I mean is the theory, the theory behind it. I mean, it's a scalar field, it's a, I don't know. Klein Gordon, uh, I don't know, I have no idea. But the source, but the source, I mean the energy momentum tensor in Einstein equation is quite simple. It's this one, okay? It's this one. We have a density, a, pressure, a radial pressure, and a tangent, tangency of pressure. That means uh, we have some <coughs> an isotropic distribution here. Okay, now we have this interior solution and we need to match this interior solution with an exterior solution. What I mean is, okay, we propose an interior solution for this object. Now, I want an exterior solution and I'm going to demand this exterior solution to be a Kerr Shield space time, okay? And I'm going to match both solutions. Why that is, why we want to do this? Always we need to do this because we need the continuity of the space-time, and also an asymptotic observer uh, is going to be not inside the distribution, but away from the distribution, okay? So there are some conditions to match both metrics, the interior metric, the interior solution, and the exterior solution. This is gonna be the exterior solution, okay? M tilde, tilde means uh, exterior. So the mass function, Remember, there is only one metric function in, the, in this space-time. Only one metric function is, this, is the mass function. So the only thing we need to demand is continuity of the mass function and the continuity of the first derivative. And this, this calculus means the function is going to be, the mass function is going to be continuous. And if the mass function is continuous, we, we, we have only one metric function, that means the metric is going to be continuous. Look at this pure geometric um, constraints imply this physical constraint. The energy density is going to be continuous at the surface, and the radial pressure is going to be continuous as well. But what happened? If we want to match with the exterior Schwarzschild solution, because we are working with the spherical symmetric situation, so we need the, the Schwarzschild solution. We need the Schwarzschild solution. And the Schwarzschild solution is a vacuum solution. Vacuum solution means the radial pressure is zero, but our solution is this, the, the radial pressure is not zero. That means we can't, we cannot match our solution with the Schwarzschild solution, impossible. So we, what we need is a kind of transition between our solution and the Schwarzschild solution, which is the correct asymptotic solutions. So what we are going to do is to use this mass function. Uh, this is associated with a heavy black hole we published uh, last year. Uh, and this mass function, I mean, if you put this mass function in the metric, in the Kerr-Shield metric, we have uh, a heavy black hole. This mass function, as the, the mass M, M the, the, the calligraphic M is the mass M. Alpha is a parameter which measures deviation from the Schwarzschild solution, and L 
the, the parameter L is a hair, which in our case is going to have a very direct interpretation, physical interpretation. In this case, just produce shift of the black holes or uh, the black hole horizon, if there is any black holes horizon. Okay, so now um, we need to be careful with this because we have two mass. Remember, we have two mass. We have this mass, M, which is contained in this volume, okay? But also we have an asymptotic mass. This is the mass which an asymptotic observer uh, see from a very large distance. So, let's suppose there is a total mass M. Of course, M is gonna be bigger than M. So let's see what happened. <coughs> Yeah, bigger. Calligraphic, calligraphic, calligraphic M, bigger than the, the M, which is the, the mass. And which one is the asymptotic mass? The calligraphic one, okay. yeah, this one. This one. You see, if R is very large, yeah, yeah. we're going to have the, this asymptotic mass. Okay, so we use the matching condition with this exterior solution, and we obtain uh, we can solve the calligraphic mass M and alpha, the parameter alpha in terms of L. We plug in the mass function and we obtain this mass function, okay? Uh, okay, important now. <coughs> we have this exterior solution. This is very, very important, this exterior solution. So this is the solution which is going to be matched with our black hole solution, uh, okay, with compact solution. So look at this solution. Uh, First, what happened when R equal R as? When R equal R as? So in this region, we have the metric functions are going to, the brackets are going to be zero, are going to disappear, okay? Can you see? So we have a trapped surface of infinite redshift, okay? This is quite important. It's clear when R is equal Rs, I mean the surface of the compact distribution, we have a trapped surface. Now, an apparent horizon when R equal to M, this is the Schwarzschild horizon. Why? Well, because we, if R is very, very large, this is going to disappear, okay? When R is very, very large, this is going to disappear, and we have the Schwarzschild solution. That means an asymptotic observer is going to see the Schwarzschild solution with this horizon. Hmm? Okay, may I ask another question? I'm sorry that I interrupted. No, 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 good, good, good. So there is a type of ultraviolet. Is it this right term? I think it's this right of the theorem that whenever you have Einstein equations and whatever physical reason about the source of matter, for example, you want to describe a star or uh, if you have a asymptotic contract and spherical symmetric distribution of matter, in all contexts you have uh, your exterior solution outside, they should always be shrouded. Yeah. So what what is wrong here? I mean, in my idea, do you follow this? Okay. Let, let's see what what yeah. what's, what's weird here. What's what's uh, yeah. why is not exactly. there is not. For, you are right. If we use the charging solution, this vacuum solution, that means the energy momentum tensor is going to be zero, 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 okay? If we plug in this expression in Einstein equation, we're going to have an energy momentum tensor, yeah. which is not zero. It's not a vacuum solution. No, but is that theorem also include like stars? So it includes uh, till the limit with uh, a reasonable physical condition in terms of energy momentum. I don't remember the details of the reaction. Yeah. It, it includes till the limit. It includes, for instance, stars. Uh, uh, okay. Understand? So, so I understand, say, actually, I understand very well. Uh, uh, and the reason. That spherical symmetric yeah. distribution of matter. The reason matter, is, yeah. Uh, exterior is all the structure. That was the thing. Exactly. Uh, what Roman said is, uh, if we demand, if we have something here, yes. if we have something here, and we demand uh, some exterior solution, which is not Schwarzschild solution, and this solution. If we demand an asymptotical uh, 
uh, with, with, asympt with a, uh, asymptotically charged solution, but it's not charged solution, that means there is no vacuum. What is the impact of this inside this expression? The impact is a solution like this. That means a negative pressure. A negative pressure, that means if you ask to an astrophysical, that means no physical solution. See? Hmm? Ah, I think, and I that, think, no, I think even not that. I think I, I remember what, what the question was about at least. Maybe they required also anisotropic distribution. So it's yeah, if you demand isotropic. You demand anisotropic. Yeah, so you, I suspect, I'm not sure I remember well, yeah, it's, but it's true. I think anisotropic yeah. breaks down. If you demand, if you demand something, breaks down exactly. Uh, there are two things. The, this equation state, th this is going to be the Kirchhoff space time, always. It's going to produce this, this uh, uh, equation of state, which for many astrophysicists is not a, a realistic astrophysical, I don't know. And also an isotropic, the anisotropic situation. Okay, so we have this solution uh, far away from the, from our objects. Now, this is quite important. For the compact object to behave uh, a Schwarzschild black hole mimicker, almost all of M, the calligra calligraphic M or the asymptotic M, must be contained here, okay, here. What happens if we have a, a very large amount of calligraphic M around this? We are not going to see the object, the compact object. We can see this object. So a requirement must M must be contained in this trapped surface, okay? Most, most of this. So this solution, and this is quite important, is free of singularities, and the mass, of course, uh, must be smaller than this one to be a proper Schwarzschild black hole mimicker. And now, look at the solution now, and this is very, very important, and this is the nice results about this. Okay, here, the blue one, uh, behave like the Schwarzschild solution. But what happened in science? Inside it's not, it's not a Schwarzschild solution anymore. We have a regular solution. And uh, R equal to M is the, I'm using M equal one, okay? Uh, we have the trap surface of the apparent horizon. So this is regular, there is no, it's regular and there is no Cauchy horizon. Now, this looks like an extremal black hole. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you remember the extremal black hole. Remember the, 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 case, the case of the Reisner black hole. We have this horizon and this horizon. Now, if we merge, if we merge the horizon with the Cochi horizon, we're going to obtain something like this. Something like this. This is the extremal black hole. And this happened when? This happened when? Uh, what is the horizon? In this case, actually, I don't remember. Uh, the horizon is M uh, plus something like this. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? If I remember well, the horizon for the Reisner Northland is this one. Yeah. So when M equal Q, we have the extremal case. What is the problem with this extremal black hole? The problem is they are not stable. What, what, what does it mean? That means a minimal perturbation is going to produce no horizon, that means no black hole, or, or horizon, and again a Cauchy horizon, okay? So, yeah, extremal black hole, a regular black hole, but they have this problem. What about this solution? Actually, I don't know, because this is in progress, okay? I need to produce some perturbation on this and, and, see, and see what happened. Uh, what is the main difference between this solution and the extremal black hole? The extremal black hole usually are obtained by saturating one of these charges, the condition in the charge. So they are kind of weird solution in the sense that it's hard uh, to have a physical realistic situation where precisely this combination of charge produce this solution. But in this case, this happened because I just demand a region of the space times where we have a trapped surface or infinite redshift. 
OK, so let's see the axial symmetric case. Uh, the axial symmetric case, it, I'm going to use um, the following. This is the, this metric uh, was found by using the Newman-Jamis uh, Newman algorithm. Yeah. They, they, they start from the spherical symmetric case, Kirchhoff again, and they produce this solution, okay? this, this metric function. So there is a kind of map between the spherical symmetric and the axial symmetric. So, okay, so remember, um, if we have a theory behind the spherical symmetric solution, this theory must be a solution of Einstein equation, of course. What happened? In our case, we have a solution. We don't know what is the theory behind this solution. We don't have what is the energy momentum tensor which you find. Yeah, but you started energy. from the things that you have energy momentum. Exactly. Am I right? I, that you have some energy momentum. Yeah, but this energy momentum tensor is the one you obtain by Einstein equation. Oh. So it's going to be trivially satisfied. And See, in this case, you will show me what is mu. Exactly. Oh. In, in this case, the the mu is the energy momentum tensor associated with the with uh, okay. the, the one I showed you. Okay. okay. Now, what we're going to do is to use the mass function and use the mass function here in this line element, and we're going to obtain uh, this. This is the oh, okay. Sorry. Briefly, this is a map between the spherical symmetric and the axial symmetric situation. This map works only when we have Kirchhoff space-time, and it's not a guarantee that we're going to obtain a, a, a solution to Einstein equation. It's not a guarantee. Be why? Well, because if we have a theory, we need to find the, the line element. So it's not a guarantee. In our case, let's see. We have the, okay, important. If we calculate the Einstein equations, uh, Einstein metric component, we can see something very, very important. The mass function is linear in M. So that means, again, we can make superposition of this kind of solution and we obtain new solution, okay? Always keeping this constraints. The rotational parameter must be the same. So we can have this kind of superposition of solutions. And we, we have different black hole solution satisfies the Einstein equation and described by this line element, we can do this, okay? We can do this. Now, what happened in our solution? All we have to do is to use the mass function we generate and using this uh, axial symmetric profile. And we're going to obtain the axial symmetric versions. But we have to be careful with this. In the line element, this zero and this delta equal zero are potential singularities. We know that lang delta equal zero is uh, no physical singularity. We can remove this by a corner transformation. But in our case, in our case, remember, our solution is regular and it doesn't have Cauchy horizon. In our case, the axial symmetric solution is regular and we can prove this, okay? But what about the, the, the trapped surface in this case? We need to find this trapped surface by using this expression and we obtain, with, with our mass function, we obtain these solutions, this expression, of, sorry. And the derivative is going to be this one. Now, a very simple analysis shows that there, is, there are no real uh, roots for the trapped surface. Also, the local minima are real and positive only in two cases, in the origin and in the, in the star surface or the, the body surface. And okay, so the local minimum, which is the candidate, remember, the, we have the extremal, the extremal cases, so the extremal minimum is the candidate to, for a, a trapped surface or horizon, is possible only in the non-rotational case. That means if we have rotation, we don't have black holes. What happened is the following. Remember, this is our solution, but as soon as we consider the rotational version, we're going to obtain this. 
there is a gap. There is a rotational effect which produces no zero. There is no chance for a zero for delta. So that means there are no horizons in these rotational solutions. Can we fix this? And the answer is yes, but this is going to be controversial for sure because we can uh, make a superposition, a superposition of the mass function uh, with this kind of. Okay. Now, it's possible to fix this, and we're going to try to fix this. I mean, we want to keep the Kerr space time. As Roman says, it's not the more general axial symmetric space time, of course, but we want to use this, okay? Because we know very well how to manage this problem. So what we are going to do is to introduce this mass function, which is a pure rotational mass function. Can you see when A, the rotational parameter is here, this just disappears. It's controversial, of course, because it's a trick, kind of dirty trick to, to, to regain the, the, the trapped surface. So the mass function inside is going to be this one, and the, the outer solution is going to be this one. This produces this solution. Now we have a regular rotating solution, which seems asymptotically, it seems like a like care. It seems care, and there is not um, there is no Cauchy horizon. There is no Cauchy horizon. Okay, so summary to, to the conclusion. We find a Schwarzschild black hole mimicker. Why black hole mimicker? Schwarzschild black hole mimicker. Mm -hmm. My original idea was precisely that one. The solution, in my case, never is going to, to switch because it's, it's the, to, to, uh, to even, even power, to four. So the one minus r over rs is to four. So it's impossible to get a switch. So at the beginning, this seems like a grab star. The same philosophy. But yeah, it's true, it's true. Uh, it's a kind of charge black hole, but it's not exactly the black hole. Okay, in any case, it's regular and has no Cauchy horizon, which is the target of this uh, token of this, uh, all, all this. Now, the axial symmetric version, in the case of the Kerr space time, is regular but contains no horizon. We can fix this problem by, uh, we can fix this problem um, by, by, um, coupling with the pure rotational source mass functions. Uh, the interior solution behaves an extremal black hole. I, 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 I show this very in, in detail. This looks an extremal black hole. But what we need to do is to try to, to see the perturbative analysis of this solution. Because if the perturbative analysis of this solution shows that the, this solution remains under perturbation, this is a very good solution. Very good solution because it's a, it could be a stable solution with no Cauchy horizon and regular. That, that would be fantastic, but we need to worry about this. Uh, now, the question is possible to see some hairs of this solution. I was talking with uh, Roman about this, about the normal modes, and to try to say something, some phenomenological about this. We don't know. Okay? So, that's it. Questions? More questions?